broadcasting live from Houston, from the space city to the world, you are watching Now Media Television. Today, in another fabulous episode of Pain Diaries, we have a special guest, Dr. Zarina Rashid, pediatric dentist extraordinaire. Also, we have a few other important guests that will discuss with us all we need to know about insurance coverage. We will also feature medical technologies that are changing the world. Remember, you can find me, Dr. Suzanne Manzi, at www.performancepain.com or call 346-217-1111. I have two locations, 4126 Southwest Freeway, Suite 1700 in Houston. I also am in the T-Mobile Tower. My other office is in League City, Texas, officing out of League City Spine and Sports Medicine at 1200 East Main Street. Don't forget to watch Pain Diaries on the following channels. Houston, 2110. Beaumont, 2710. Atlanta, 2210. Lake Charles, 2110. College Station, 1410. Eagle Pass, 24. Piedras Negras, 24. And hear us in Chicago on 102.9 FM and 104.3 FM in Huntsville, Texas. Don't forget to tune in to Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Music. And follow us on all social media and our digital platforms such as nowmedia.com. Please note that the information in this show is for informational purposes only and is not medical advice. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice, and I urge you to seek medical advice from your physician regarding any medical condition. Reliance on the information provided in this show is provided solely at your own risk. Hello, and I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi, and this is Pain Diaries. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I'm going to be talking about a topic that has always interested me, gum disease and the connection to heart disease. In April 2021, Dr. Robert Schmerling in Harvard put out an article addressing this issue. Why would cardiovascular disease and poor oral health be connected? There's some theories. First, the bacteria that infect the gums and cause gingivitis and periodontitis also travel to blood vessels elsewhere in the body where they can cause blood vessel inflammation and damage. Tiny blood clots, heart attack, and even a stroke may follow. Supporting this idea is finding of remnants of oral bacteria within the atherosclerotic blood vessels, far from the mouth. Then again, antibiotic treatment has not proven effective at reducing cardiovascular risk. Maybe rather than bacteria causing the problem, it's the body's immune response. Inflammation, that can set off a cascade of different damaged areas throughout the body in the vascular system, including the heart and the brain. And maybe number three, there may be no direct connection between gum disease and cardiovascular disease. The reason that they may occur together is that there's a third factor, maybe such as smoking, that's a risk factor for both condi conditions. Other potential confounders include poor access to health care and lack of exercise. Perhaps people without health insurance or who don't take good care of their overall health are more likely to have poor oral health and heart disease. In one study published in 2018, oral health and later coronary heart disease, cohort study of one million people. This is among the largest to look at this question. Researchers analyzed data from nearly a million people who experienced more than 65,000 cardiovascular events, including heart attack. They found that after accounting for age, there was a moderate correlation between tooth loss, which is a measure of poor oral health, and coronary artery disease. When smoking status was considered, the connection between tooth loss and cardiovascular disease largely disappeared. 
This study suggests that poor oral health does not directly cause cardiovascular disease. But if that's true, how do we explain other studies that found a connection even after accounting for smoking and other cardiovascular risk factors? It's rare that a single study definitively answers a question that has been pondered by researchers for decades, which is why I asked this question myself. So we'll probably need additional studies to sort this out. But wait, there's more. The connection between poor oral health and overall health may not be limited to cardiovascular disease. Studies have linked periodontal disease, especially due to infection with a bacterium called Porphyrmonas gingivalis and rheumatoid arthritis. In addition, a 2018 study found a link between the same bacterium and the risk of pancreatic cancer. However, as in the case of the connection with heart disease, an association is not the same as causation. Again, an association is not the same as causation. We just need more research to figure out the importance of these observations. The bottom line is whether the link's direct, indirect, or just a plain old coincidence, a healthy mouth and a regimen to keep it that way, including not smoking and getting regular dental care, can help you keep your teeth. That's enough reason to do what you can to make oral health a priority. Perhaps it will turn out to have other benefits, though much of what remains speculative. Stand by for more studies on the link between oral health and overall health. Until then, keep brushing, flossing, and go visit your friendly dentist. Remember, it all starts before the age of one year old. The sooner kiddos begin getting regular checkups, they will hopefully establish a habit of having a healthy mouth for their for lives. The goals are to prevent cavities, tooth decay, which can lead to pain, difficulty with concentration, and also med other medical issues. In a healthy mouth, the teeth can easily chew food, speech is more clear, and a confident smile can radiate. Remember, here at Pain Diaries, you have to take care of you so you can take care of business. We'll be back with a commercial break and then with our guests featured on today's show. Today's show. I can't wait for you to meet pediatric dentist Zarina Rashid and our other special guests. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi, and this is Pain Diaries. Welcome back to Pain Diaries. Dr. Suzanne Manzi here with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine. I'm proud to introduce my dear friend. She's the owner of Z Pediatric Dentistry, so we can talk about the importance of dental care in kiddos, as well as a topic that means a lot to her. Dr. Zarina Rashid is located in Pearland, Texas, and can be found at zpdentistry.com and on 10555 Pearland Parkway, Suite L in Houston, 77089. Dr. Rashid is the owner of her pediatric dental practice and she has an amazing team that focuses on keeping our little one's teeth healthy. She also has a passion regarding the Osteogenesis Imperfecta Foundation, also known as brittle bone disease. She'll be talking about that a little bit later. So first, Dr. Rashid, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's just an honor and a privilege to have you as a friend and a colleague, so I really appreciate being oh, here today. thank you. So, Tell me about yourself. Tell us about your practice. So what do we need to know about pediatric dentistry? Absolutely. There's a whole world that we can chat about. Um, so I am a pediatric dentist and I am married. I have two children, three if you count my dog <laughs> and four if you count my husband. So um, we have a very full house. Um, I have been in practice for almost 10 years now. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Um, and it's just been a really great journey. I started out Hook'em Horns as a Longhorn down in Austin. Um, and then I kind of knew I wanted to be a dentist forever. Um, so I came here to Houston and did dental school here. And then I'm just really passionate about working with children. I've always loved um, being able to treat them. And so I did a two year fellowship as well here in Houston. Um, and then I opened up my own practice. 
It's been about seven years since I've had my own practice, which has just been so great and fun. Um, I opened my practice kind of knowing that there's a lot of negative connotation around going to the dentist. There's a lot of fear and anxiety. And I wanted my main mission and goal at my practice to be to eliminate that. Um, you know, our generation, our parents' generation, they always talk about almost going to the dentist as a threat, kind of right. as a punishment. Um, and I wanted them and the children to know that that's not necessarily the case. You can have a very positive, fun experience by coming and visiting the dentist. Yeah, I've always liked going to the dentist because I got, you know, a special goodie bag and I left and some stickers and some new toothpaste and a cool new toothbrush. But yeah, it's, sometimes when they have to do a little more invasive procedures, it's, it's not always the most fun, but the nice part is, you know, comfort is what you're trying to achieve for your patients. And as a patient myself that goes to the dentist, I do appreciate that. And, you know, taking my kids to see you too. Yep. You we somehow, love having them. <laughs> you somehow get in their mouth and get it done. That's pretty awesome. I mean, you don't seem very scary. <laughs> Thank you. I try to explain that to people as well. Yes. <laughs> so tell me some of the techniques you use to make it less scary for kids. Absolutely. Um, so again, when I built my practice, I was very fortunate to have a heavy hand in it and um, create it to really take off that anxiety from moms primarily because they are the ones that have to kind of go through tracking their kids through the door or having them understand that this doesn't have to be that scary. So letting the children walk in knowing that it's for them. You know, it's little, everything's little. We have like <laughs> tiny toilets, we have tiny sinks, um, their chairs fit them. And so they can just right off the bat know that this is a place for them. It's not an adult place where children will be. It's made for them. Um, we have wireless headphones and all the latest movies playing. So when they're laying down in their most vulnerable state, they're really comfortable and they can kind of take away that anxiety as well. Um, one of the things I love the most that I'm able to incorporate in my practice is my water lace. And what that is, is a laser that takes away um, the need for a shot. Uh, you know, so the biggest thing, again, that parents kind of threaten their children with is, you're going to get a shot if you go to the dentist or if you're, you know, being <laughs> really bad. Well, now they can't say that anymore. Um, I'm able to use this laser and we can do simple basic procedures like their fillings and restorations mm -hmm. and they don't even um, have to get a needle in their mouth. They leave without a numb lip, without a numb tongue. They can go back to school the next, you know, hour um, and it's like they were really never there. So oh, parents, wow. yeah, parents love it, children love it and um, we're just really excited to be able to offer that. Do you do that to adults too? You know, every mom and dad <laughs> asks that. me that. They're always like, can you work on my teeth right. now? And I'm sorry, I don't. I specialize <laughs> only in children, thank you. <laughs> I would have a long line of family out the door if I said that I did adults. <laughs> well, then you could retire early maybe. That would, that would be the goal. <laughs> so as a pediatric dentist, do you just do general dentistry or do you have specialties within your practice? How does that work? Yes, so other than kind of the basic extractions and fillings, um, I have two main focuses that I um, chose to do when I opened my practice. One specifically is working with tongue ties and the other is um, to work with special needs children. Okay, tell me a little bit about a tongue tie. What, is, what does that entail? Yes, yeah, so it's the small area underneath your tongue. Um, it's literally what keeps your tongue kind of in your mouth. Um, and a tongue tie specifically is a restriction. So um, I have a lot of moms coming in trying to nurse their children and right off the bat they report pain, mm. um, you know, and a lot of discomfort. And so that's something that I found um, right when I opened my practice, my nephew was born. And I also happened to be taking a CE course all about tongue ties. Um, and I remember being in the course and I was texting my sister the whole time and I was like, hey, I think, you know, your son has this. Remember when you told me this? Um, and it was just all these symptoms that get yeah. overlooked and misdiagnosed as something else completely. You know, a lot of people told him that he was colicky. Um, he had a lot of reflux and GERD. He was bloated. Okay. And we couldn't really figure out what that was. And so after um, I came back from the course, I treated him. And what was incredible was within a month, almost all of his symptoms were gone. And so I was able to kind of see him before, you know, the struggle that my sister and him had mm -hmm. on their journey and then getting to see the results after. It was just amazing. And I really wanted to be able to offer that to other families. Um, you know, motherhood, I know you know, yeah. it's just such a challenge. And to be able to take that first step of trying to feed your child and having that be such a challenge um, and make that a little bit easier for families is really what I wanted to do. That's amazing because you know, we wouldn't think, oh, we need to go to the dentist for something like that. But Absolutely. the fact that 
you know, the nursing part, when you're a mom, like, you need to feed your child. You can't just give them food. Right. And so it's, it's, it's a huge, huge benefit that, you know, people are educated that pediatric dentists like yourself can do this for them to help that initial connection that mom and baby have to have. Absolutely. You know, um, being able to treat it, most pediatricians and lactation consultants are my biggest referrals, and um, having them kind of on board and really understand that is so important. Well, thank you. That's, that's huge. Um, let's get back to kind of what I did in the intro. You know, we talked about, you know, why is oral health important? But starting for kids, you know, why is dental hygiene such an important thing to start with? And, you know, how does this good oral hygiene lead to being a healthy adult? Sure, absolutely. Um, it's so important right off the bat, um, kind of why I opened my practice, really the anxiety, um, even as you mentioned, having them come in first and um, care so much about their oral hygiene right off the bat kind of sets them up for life. Um, if you can start at a young age educating the parents, that's typically what we do when they're six months to a year old and they come in for their first checkup. That's really my big goal, letting parents understand the importance of their diet um, and their hygiene as a whole unit. And then kind of letting those children grow up with those type of principles, you know, knowing what's sugary and what's not, um, mm -hmm. knowing to go to bed without sugar on their teeth versus brushing before they go to bed. Um, and that way they, again, just have a really positive experience every time they come to the dentist um, and just having that knowledge right off the bat. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that, all that amazing information. We're going to go to a commercial break, but when we get back, we're going to talk about how you mentioned you enjoy treating special needs children. And you can tell me why that means so much to you. I look forward to seeing you back in a few minutes. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi here with Dr. Zarina Rashid here at Pain Diaries. Hi, Dr. Suzanne Manzi, back here at Pain Diaries with Dr. Zarina Rashid, our pediatric dentist from Z Pediatric Dentistry. So, Dr. Rashid, I know before commercial break you mentioned that you enjoy treating special needs children. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, it holds a special place in my heart because my son has special needs. Um, he has osteogenesis imperfecta. Um, it has just been a whirlwind of an experience having that and um, kind of traveling through this whole journey with him, it's just been really difficult. And um, being able to have advocates and a support system has just been so important to me. And it was something that I wanted to incorporate in my own practice so that way um, I can also be an advocate and a team member for these types of families. Um, you know, these children often get overlooked because they have so many things going on and they can be very complicated cases. Um, and a lot of times these parents just don't even know where to begin. These children have been in and out of hospitals their whole lives. You know, they've experienced shots and injections and treatments and it's just already a very anxiety provoking type of situation. Um, and that was something that I wanted to incorporate and help families through. Um, even within my own practice, a lot of these children go under general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be just so overwhelming. I personally have had to put my son under general anesthesia over six times. Um, and it's emotional every time. Um, and I wanted to be able to help these families and these moms, especially being able to make those decisions that can be so hard. Of course. Um, and knowing that they have an advocate and somebody that can kind of support them through those types of decisions. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about osteogenesis imperfecta. I know it's just caused by a spontaneous mutation where it just kind of pops up out of nowhere. It's not inherited, anything like that. Um, and the bones of a child are brittle. And are there, is there a cure for that? Or is there any type of treatment that can help with relieving that type of brittle bone disease? Yes, so not quite um, a cure, but definitely extremely treatable. Um, what's wonderful about it is there is such a great foundation, the OI Foundation. Um, and through this organization, there's so much research and funding that goes into it that can help these types of families um, really be able to have a somewhat normal life that these children previously weren't ever thought to have. Um, just 10 or 15 years ago, they were thought to only have four different types of osteogenesis imperfecta. And what's amazing is now we know that there are over 16 different types. 
um, just with that basic knowledge treatment modalities have completely changed you know instead wow. of it just being this generic infusion or casting him whenever he breaks something um, we are able to actually specifically treat what he has um, <clears throat> anytime that we've ever had to go um, to get treatments done it's just been kind of tailored and couture to him anytime that he needs his infusion. So um, it's really incredible just how so many things That's have amazing. changed. Yeah, I remember when I learned in medical school, there was only four types and yep. that was it. Um, mm -hmm. You're unfortunately stuck with this disease, but being involved with you and the foundation, I've learned so much and it's amazing. The Osteogenesis Imperfecta Foundation, OIF.org, check it out. It's a great group of people. They really do an amazing job to help these kiddos. And you know, I'm, I'm honored to help spread the word about helping these, these people that are born with this, with this problem. Yeah, it's, it's really been incredible. The foundation, you know, when my son was born, um, we didn't know he had it. He broke his first bone, his femur bone, the largest bone in his body, um, when he was just 10 months old. And that was, again, just emotionally overwhelming. We had absolutely no idea what to do. Um, then yeah. they started telling us that we weren't sure if he was ever going to be able to walk. Um, and it was just a lot to take in. And thanks to this foundation, um, I had a great support system that kind of guided us through all the decisions that we had to make as a family. Um, they ended up putting rods in all of his bones and he's six years old and can walk. Um, he yeah. can even run sometimes, which is really <laughs> cool. Uh, very nerve wracking, but very <laughs> exciting. And um, it, if it wasn't for you know them and advocates and support systems that we have, then you know, he may not even be able to do these kinds of things. He's, I mean, he's an amazing little dude. And when <laughs> I see cool. him, <laughs> I mean, it's really amazing to see, like, the progress he's made. And he's so smart. And to have a physical hindrance is frustrating. I completely understand. Absolutely. Um, but to know, you know, he's got the most amazing parents and the support system and a foundation behind him and other kids with this problem, you know, it, it's really cool to see the the advances and the developments that have happened. Yes, definitely, absolutely. <laughs> We're very fortunate to kind of be a part of it. But I mean, at a young age, you know, it's it can be challenging. Us putting rods in a six-year-old or a five-year-old, however old he was when he first had them, um, that's got to be painful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it it was overwhelming um, to I, even as a physician, I'm very comfortable with these type of prescription drugs, but the details of the side effects and how to treat a 10 month old, um, it right. was just something that was so completely new and unknown to us. Uh, and being able to reach out to colleagues and friends that were comfortable um, and could advocate for us was really important. Um, I can't tell you how many times I just learned so much with bones being connected to muscle and he would have muscle spasms or he would wake up in the middle of the night and just be in excruciating pain. I've never broken a bone. I couldn't even right. relate to him and we were just trying to figure out what do we give him? How do we treat him? What's going to be the best pain um, control for him? And it's been over the years with kind of trial and error and people guiding us that we figured out, you know, exactly how to make him as comfortable as possible through all of these breaks. Right. And I mean, they, you don't necessarily have to give them opioids all the time. Exactly. There's muscle relaxers, there's yep. just ibuprofen, Tylenol, just the basic things to help. But again, you know, if you go to the hospital, sometimes as a parent, you might be worried, hey, like they don't give my kid morphine or something like that. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a challenge and can be traumatic for both the parent and the child, so. Yes, definitely. And so it's it's been really nice. Um, <laughs> Again, my sister is a pain doctor, and you, of course, um, kind of guiding us through that and helping us um, be an advocate for him. Absolutely. You know, we love him, and we love <laughs> the foundation especially. I mean, just giving back and, you know, really advancing the field so these kids can get the right help they need. Yes, definitely. Um, it's hard to try and kind of fight for a small child, they don't have their own voice and you see them and you see the struggles that they go through and so just really trying to be that voice for them is so important. Absolutely. So if you're at all interested in getting involved with the Osteogenesis Imperfecta Foundation, OIF.org, and or need an amazing dentist for your kiddos, <laughs> please see, come see Dr. Zarina Rashid here in Houston at our Paraland location. We're happy to work together to help you get better because as you know, from Pain Diaries, you have to take care of you and your loved ones so you can continue to take care of business.
Thanks, Dr. Rashid. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. We're going to go to a commercial break. Welcome back again to Pain Diaries. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi, and I have Emily Trevino here. We're gonna explore more insurance options. Now Media TV and Pain Diaries welcomes you back to the show. Thank you, I'm here to talk about the pains of insurance and try to get people to understand not to be settling for what they have. It's open enrollment season right now, and it is such a pain trying to explain this to people. It is. In fact, I was just talking to somebody outside about it as well. She thought she, she had her dates wrong. She wasn't sure what, you know, what to do. She hasn't had any contact from her agent. And so those are some of the pains that I want to talk about today because we want to help educate the public on what are your options, what you need to do today, and what you can expect from working with somebody like us as a broker. So one of the most important things for everyone to know is that you have to enroll by December 15th to start your health plan, your full coverage health plan, on January 1st. We do have an extension this year until January 15th. So the government, the federal government, the United States federal government is giving <laughs> us a little bit of a reprieve right there, but your plan will not start until February 1st. And that is leaving Americans without coverage. So it's really important to prioritize this right now. You need to get your information together and you give us a call or contact us on our, our email or on our website so that way we can get in front of that information and get you into a health plan starting January 1st. So again, just put in your brain December 15th. <laughs> <laughs> December 15th. <laughs> get shopping before the holidays start. Exactly. And handle your insurance so you already know, you already have it paid for, you don't have to worry about it, and you can go into Christmas knowing that you're going to have your health insurance starting January 1st. You don't want a gap in coverage because if you have something happen to you with that two week window, there's nothing that can really be done about that. You're on the hook. No, and there are options. So one of the biggest things that people need to realize is if you want a full coverage health insurance option, you have both what's called on marketplace and off marketplace. So most people don't realize and they bury their head in the sand saying, there's not affordable insurance, there's not affordable insurance. I'm telling you, give us a call and see if you qualify because yeah. the federal government does help pick up and pay for part of those premiums. There are income qualifications and it is based on your taxable household, but it's really important to at least find out what you qualify for. I have people paying zero premium plans. Wow. And co-pays on their plans. It really is just based on what you qualify for. So when you contact us, we're the ones that do all the heavy lifting for you. We filter through all the plans. We see what you can qualify from the federal government. And I'm not talking about Medicaid. Right. I'm not talking about Medicaid or anything ran through the state. So a lot of people don't understand uh -huh. that ACA, or the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, it's not an Obamacare plan or an Obama plan or anything <laughs> like that. It's not what it is. The only part, it's a two-part system. So the first one is we're going to see if you qualify for a subsidy where the government will pick up and pay your premium. The second part, we're going to find you a private health insurance company that you can apply that subsidy to. And it is okay. all based on your needs. So you give us the information, we do the shopping. I mean, how cool is that? You're going to give people all this information that they don't always have to pay wanted for and they don't have to pay for it. It's free and here, information. And it's free information. It doesn't cost you anything. And one of the big misconceptions is, is that, well, if I work with somebody like Emily, then I got to pay a higher price. No. And a lot of the plans on Marketplace, remember, because we still have to talk about the other options, but on Marketplace, a lot of them have pay very similar. So we're not incentivized to push one plan over right. the other. We're truly looking at all the options for you, going through the information, and based on the information you provide to us, that's the plan that we help find for you. So you don't have to do a brunt of the work. We'll do it for you. I wish I could just have you sit in my office. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and explain like, yeah. this to people one at a time as they come in. Well, but they can just pick up the phone and call Wise Insurance. They can. And speak to you. They can contact us, all of our team. We have a, a huge team. We speak Vietnamese. We have Spanish and nice. English speaking. So we have a lot of bilingual agents. 
Um, we, they're all well versed, they're highly trained, they follow all the regulatory compliance, they have access to all the carriers that they need, and so our job is to be offer as much comprehensive knowledge as we possibly can for them. That's truly amazing. I yes. mean, people should be seeking you out immediately. There's only a few days left for this year. Yeah, they have till next week for uh, December 15th right. to start January 1st. If you miss that deadline, don't wait too much longer. Still call us, but we're, we really educate people on that. Um, we're on social media platforms. We let people know what's going on. Um, and the other thing too is we work with local doctors. We work with doctors, offices, hospital systems, providers like yourself. So when you have a client that's confused, they can contact us and we'll kind of guide them through what we can related to their health insurance. Sometimes we can help them, sometimes we can't, but at least we can point them in the right direction on what they need to do. No, that's truly fantastic. Um, it sounds like you care for these we people do. just as much as we care for our patients. And exactly. It's important, you know, people don't, people can have an accident unexpectedly. That's why it's an accident, right? Exactly. And so to have coverage is key. And if you do have a situation where you have a gap in coverage, like maybe you are transitioning your jobs and you have that like 90 day probationary period, there's options for that too. We call that short term medical insurance. You do have to do some health questions for that, but that is helping a lot of Americans transition from one position to the other. But one thing I really wanna encourage people to do is don't just settle for what your friend told you or what your neighbor has or what you grew up knowing or PPO, HMO. Just don't bury your head in the sand. Give us a call, let us simplify it for you, and we're gonna give you the honest truth uh, information that's available at the time. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope we can solve people's pains this December. We definitely need to solve <laughs> the pain of insurance. Do not go without coverage. It is extremely important. You know, I'm going to give a good example as, as we round the, you know, wind this up, but I had a, a, pay, a client of mine. All she had to pay was like $23 a month, but she was like, well, I can't because I'm doing this or that. And I was like, okay, but it was a good plan. She ended up in the hospital. <gasps> with a, a really bad chronic condition. I mean, obviously I can't disclose that, but right. uh, a really bad chronic condition. Her hospital bill, she was there for three weeks, it was over $80,000. Whoa. So you, it's like, you could have just paid your 20 bucks and then your <laughs> out-of-pocket expenses would not be $80,000. Yeah. So don't hide behind the, it's, un, it's too expensive for me. Believe it or not, we are offering affordable insurance to Americans all over the US. So give us a call. Thank you, Emily. Emily Trevino with Wise Insurance. We appreciate you being here with us today and providing insight into the world of insurance and the pains we are facing. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you again on the show here in Houston, Texas at 2110 on Now Media TV. I'm Suzanne Hanzi and this is Pain Diaries. Hi, Dr. Suzanne Manzi here. Welcome back to Now Media's TV show, Pain Diaries, broadcasting here in Houston, Texas, on Channel 2110. We are back with our recurring segment by Marissa Burris with My Vital C. I'm pleased to introduce you, Marissa, and welcome back to the show. Thank you, Pain Diaries, for inviting me to participate here in this program and share more about my company, My Vital C. One of the questions that people ask us all the time, what are the health benefits of My Vital C and how can it help us? My name is Marisa Burris and my company, My Vital C, is a Houston company that produces ES60, which is carbon 60 processed to be safer for human consumption. ES60 is a molecule that acts as a free radical scavenger. Free radicals are naturally occurring molecules within the body that exist through natural process such as aging, stress, and unhealthy habits such as drinking and smoking. Free radicals are oxidative cells that in theory causes aging and disease what ES60 does is find any free radicals and neutralize them like a free radical sponge. 
ES60 has been shown in studies to be 172 times stronger than vitamin C. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory and it's a very powerful antioxidant. Many people who have been taking our product report a lot of positive results, but the most common um, testimonials are the increase in energy that lasts throughout the day, better sleep at night, and an overall sense of well-being. And who doesn't want to feel well, right? We remind you that this product has not been studied by the FDA since it's not a drug or medicine that cures or prevents disease. Well, many of these testimonials you can find in our website, www.viralies60.com. But what I want to talk about here is what people are saying about the health benefits of my Vital C. Remember that the experience may be different for each person. There are testimonials that my Vital C has helped with molecular degeneration. So people are experiencing benefits such as better vision. There are people who say that their vision has not continued to deteriorate over time. Even the staff who works in our company and who consume my vital C has noticed that. Another of the most consistent testimonials for my vital C is that it helps improve your sleep and people who have trouble falling asleep or who wake up multiple times during the night have noted that they sleep more soundly when taking my vital C. We have some testimonials where people who used to need more than eight hours of sleep to have a productive day can now function with only five hours and wake up feeling that they are not tired they have more energy for the whole day. And as well, uh, all know that if you sleep well, many things in your life can improve. We also get many reports of mental clarity or better mental acuity, better memory, and overall more vitality throughout the day. We have testimonials about people who are able to exercise harder than they were used to do since they started taking my vital C. And other people who say they recovered faster after their physical workouts. Other reports we have been given is that people are noticing increase in their how fast their nails are growing, their nails and hair are growing, and people have even reported that it's growing, the hair is growing back in places that hasn't grown in years and no more gray hair actually. The hair natural color is returning. I personally have been taking it since the end of 2017 and I will tell you about my own experience taking my vital C in the next segment. If you want to buy it or try it, go to our website and Please inform us about your benefits that you experience. The website is www.vitales60.com. You can find us in social media and Instagram in at my uh, sorry vitales60. And also my website and my email marisa at vitalc.com. Our telephone number is. 832-463-1919 and I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa, for all that wealth of information. We are so grateful for your guest appearance here on Pain Diaries. We look forward to seeing you again. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi and this is Pain Diaries. Remember, take care of you so that you can take care of business. This has been a Now Media Television feature presentation, All Rights Reserved.